So, so like everybody else on the internet, I thought I would make some quarantine content. Um, I'm going to read to you a story. Um, my second published story. It was published in Marion Zimmer Bradley's Fantasy Magazine in... 1993, quite a while ago. Um, this one is called, it even got an illustration, this one is called Hand to Hand. Um, we'll give it a try. Captain Lanchian parted the curtain and ducked under the low stone lintel of Ghana's place. He peered around the cluttered gloom and wrinkled his nose at the incense-spiced air. Ghana, a short, broad man, stripped to the waist, with hair thin on his head but thick on his arms and chest, and loose pantaloons tied high around his belly, stepped out of a back room and looked up at Lanchian. How may this one help the great captain? Lanchian looked down at him from his height, his face made ugly by scars and weather and a thrice-broken nose, scowled suspiciously at the little man. I am told you are a healer that you can fix my hands. What is wrong with your hands? They hurt. How do they hurt? Lanchin made an impatient gesture and instantly regretted it. His face went white with pain. They ache, he hissed through clenched teeth. They spasm, they cramp. My doctors give me powders and salves. The, the pain remains. Ghana nodded. He motioned to a stool. Please sit, Captain, and allow me to examine you. Lanchin lowered himself stiffly onto the stool. He was careful that his spurs and sword did not stray into the chaos of bottles and books that surrounded him. Ghana nodded at the sword. May it be you are sore from fighting? I have wielded a sword since I was ten. I know that pain. That is not this. Ghana sat opposite Lanchin and took his sword hand. He began to prod it and press it experimentally. Lanchin sucked in a sharp breath, but held his hand firm. When did the pain begin? asked Ghana. Soon after we came to this cursed city. Perhaps then it is some new thing that you do here that your hands are un unaccustomed to doing? Tell me what you have done since you have come here. Lanchin looked at him sharply. Don't joke with me, old man. I'm sure you know better than you would like what I have done here. Ghana kept his eyes focused on Lanchin's hand. I know what your people have done here, yes, but not you in particular. What have your duties and habits been since you arrived? Your words may reveal the cause of your pain, and it is much easier to find a cure once one knows the cause. Lanchin eyed the shiny top of Ghana's head as if contemplating the best way to split it. Finally, he spoke. It is true my duties are different now, but none of the work is hard. He winced as Ghana spread his fingers. I have occupied cities before under many commanders. It is an easy thing compared to battle, a chance for the men to rest and learn the strengths and weaknesses of the enemy. But my Lord Albane is not content with this. He says we must make an example of the people of Karad, so that the rest of your country may fear us. I carry out his wishes. My lord Albane commanded that all male children under a year be burnt. It was the task of my men to take the children. We fought weeping women. I never needed to close a fist. My lord commanded that your elders watch as our soldiers defiled their daughters and wives. I held their heads so that they could not look away. They were weak. It was no effort at all. My lord commanded that we feed your priests the meat of your sacred animals. I held my swords to their necks while, try to relax your hands. Lanchin looked down. The veins of his hands writhed fitfully over his white knuckles. His muscles were knots. With a conscious effort of will, he relaxed his hands. His breath came shallow and rapid. He ground his lip. That is the pain, he gasped. That is the pain you must stop. Ghana nodded and let go of Lanchin's hand. He seemed lost in thought. Well, healer, can you cure me? Ghana sighed and turned his gaze to Lanchin's ill-used face. 
I think I know the cause of your pain, Captain. But as to a cure, he hesitated nervously. I can give you some temporary relief, but the great captain will forgive me if I say that I am not the one to cure you. Then who is? Is there another in this godforsaken town that can cure me? Ghana nodded. There is. He swallowed. You. Lanchin glared at him, uncomprehending, then exploded. Stop speaking in riddles, you venny scum. I cannot bear this pain another day. What do you mean? My most sincere apologies, great captain. I did not mean to confuse. I will endeavor to be more straightforward. He took a deep breath and continued. Your hands hurt because you do not like what they are doing. Whether you allow yourself to think it or not, you are repulsed by the things you are commanded to do. The resulting tension rests in your hands. Ridiculous. I've killed hundreds of men, hundreds of soldiers, captain, on the field of battle the field of honor. What you do now is not soldiering, but butchery. Lanchin's dagger was at Ghana's throat. It shook. This is no diagnosis. You try to poison my mind, to turn me from my duty. Ghana gulped and held up his hands in surrender. You are right, Captain. It was a blatant attempt to persuade you to stop killing my countrymen. Lanchin's head sagged. The dagger faltered. No. You are right, it is my Lord Albane who is wrong. My job is not to kill old men and children, to torture women. It does nothing. It is pointless. He sighed deeply, but these are my orders. Ghana eased himself away from the dagger's point. I can see for you three courses of action, and know that they are no trick, for none of them benefits me or my people in the least. Lanchin raised his head and lowered the dagger. He pressed his hands to his chest, flexing and twisting them in a vain effort to relieve his agony. They are... One, do nothing. Go on as you have before and pray that your physician's powders and salves begin to work. Pah! Two, leave the army. Lanchin barked the closest he ever came to a laugh. Soldiering is all I know. Say another. Three, join another regiment. Return once more to the field. Leave your Lord Albane to the butchery he enjoys. Lanchin sighed. That too is impossible. Albane would never let me go. I do his work too well. There must be another way. A wave of pain paled his face. He clenched his hands with all his might. There must! Kinda reached for a jar of oil. Come, Captain. Let me give your hands what relief I can. What I say is not but speculation. Relax. Put your mind at ease. Lanchin let Ghana take his hand and begin to rub it with the scented oil. His hard face stared into the dark recesses of the shop. His mind worked. A few days later, on his way home, as the city buzzed and cautiously rejoiced at the news of the mysterious and unexpected death of the cruel foreign general Lord Albane, Ghana happened upon Captain Lanchin, supervising a work party of soldiers and civilians, rebuilding a shop damaged in the recent siege. He approached the captain with a bow. Good day, captain. How are your hands? Lanchin turned and looked the broad little man up and down. He flexed his fingers as if crushing someone's neck and raised the corner of his mouth a hair's width. Better, he said. Much better. He returned his attention to the work party. Ghana bowed to the captain's back, then continued down the street, smiling.